Добрый день всем. Спасибо. Good afternoon, everyone. I thank you for being a part of our session. This is our final session. Uh, thanks uh, for being patient enough. And I would like to introduce uh, our speakers. It's myself, Arslan, and also uh, my colleague Ajara from Venture Rocket Eurasia Hub, uh, our partner Asaf, founder of Time Technologies, and uh, CEO Kian, the, of the Brit uh, British Venture Fund. I would start first and approximately 10 minutes for each speaker. And you have just seen the video about Venture Rocket Eurasia. Let me provide more detail about this investment platform, which was established to manage the ecosystems of startups. It was established as a result of the partnership of Interhub uh, AIFC together with the in technology, which is the full-fledged innovative uh, research company that has the research centers and offices in Israel. Uh, just to launch this project, uh, we had uh, a number of prerequisites. The first one is that uh, uh, Kazakhstan and Central Asia develops the startup ecosystem and the demand for financing for of startups is growing. And also in the new reality of COVID, uh, the, uh, pub, uh, the digitalization will accelerate and this will cause certain uh, support by the government and businesses. And COVID also had a negative impact on the businesses and they had to adapt to the new reality. And number three is that each group has its own roles uh, issued, uh, related to the attracting financing and uh, searching for startups. And also uh, there is a need to verify the startups because it is caused by the insufficient understanding of the local markets by the uh, foreign investors and uh, venture capitals. And also the risks should be verified involving other investors and high transaction costs uh, for Grant providers, the key field, uh, the key issues are the transparency, the efficient uh, uh, schemes of distributing grants. As, therefore, we would like to merge all the ecosystem under the same umbrella and facilitate the efficient collaboration of all the players. This slide uh, shows that uh, the key objectives of the platform to facilitate the development of, of innovations and development of ecosystem to uh, stimulate uh, the investments. Thus, uh, we are matching the startups with the accredited and professional investors. Uh, this is the ecosystem that we are developing, both regional and local, and we are trying to match the existing ecosystem in the form of the online platform with convenient interface where a startup can very easily can, uh, contact the investors and will start the process of raising capital and for the investors to identify the startup that could be of interest for, for the investor. We have done a lot of work to implement this project. First of all, we started this platform and based on the regulation of AFC that helped uh, organizing this platform. And under this platform, we got the license, uh, developed the action plan. And at the moment we are uh, registering the participants on the platform. Recently, we carried out the school for venture investments together with the partners. And we are planning to organize such events on a regular basis. On the uh, 15th, uh, we have done uh, the, we have reported on the progress and uh, chose uh, potential five startups uh, that my colleague will describe later. To understand what we are doing, I would like to explain the services that we are providing. Uh, we are providing the whole range of services to support the ecosystem, including the comprehensive support accompanying the process, uh, the ability to get access to the international markets and also venture studios that our partner will describe, preparation for venture investment and uh, access to, uh, to advantages of AIFC operations. Uh, these slides uh, will demonstrate the development of startups and whereby the investors would uh, get funding and would invest them both like like banks or and other brokers but we observe that the world of intermediaries is disappearing in many sectors and one of such uh, 
examples are uh, trading. They all try to trade directly and trading uh, uh, trading in intermediaries are now replaced by the marketplaces uh, who uh, replaced brokers in real estate and tourism and uh, insurance. Uh, speaking about crowdfunding or collective financing, you can see in this slide how this industry evolutionized. Uh, that is at the beginning, it acted more like support of social things, and uh, with time, it, uh, more, it turned more into the issuance of loans. And uh, in 2019, since the US changed the legislation, they created the new opportunities to invest uh, via the platform into the private companies. And at the end, you can see that uh, there are some companies uh, like uh, Angel Lists and uh, uh, they are the full-fledged operating companies that finance in a number of uh, startups and uh, help venture products. Uh, there are quite a lot of new innovative products, including fundraising for funds. So you can see that the industry is evolutionizing and changes like any other business with time. And like any other business, it goes into the trend of technologizing. And uh, we hope, we think that with time, the venture uh, sector will become technological. Uh, speaking about our platform, how it operates, it consists of five elements. The first one is uh, uh, choose an, of projects and selection of projects. Uh, we very carefully collect, uh, identify the startups in our system and register all the participants of the ecosystem using our platform, using our verification. Uh, system including QRC and um, emails. Then uh, we match all the interested parties. Uh, we also provide the services of the venture studios, uh, studio, which is the uh, software uh, that uh, will systematize and prepare the profiles of the startups. The next slide shows uh, how we uh, do the scouting of startups, uh, first we seek for them. Uh, this is normally done by our partners and uh, oh, then we do the detailed check of pitch deck, uh, then the, we provide the uh, demonstration of our team. After that, we provide the due diligence and uh, eventually it will be brought to the investment committee consisting of uh, uh, independent experts uh, that provide the appraisals and uh, authorize to an announcement of the startup uh, so that could, it could initiate uh, fundraising. And uh, then we uh, issue the final decision whether the startup is allowed to raise funds. Uh, by way of summary, uh, I would like to identify the key characteristics of the platform, uh, what it provides a, a collection of funds, uh, uh, the flow of projects, support of uh, Q, Q, uh, KYC and the ML regulation of AIFC, the management of various portfolio startups, uh, from various countries. We also provide for um, educational packaging and we also um, provide for instrument for tracking, uh, tracking startups and also monitoring instruments, uh, which is the specialized function for the investors, whereby we will provide information about the startups after they start the investments and we will uh, keep um, investors aware of the progress of the startups. Uh, this is how the interface uh, look. Uh, the, in, every investor can uh, get access to the startups. Uh, this is kind of a social me network uh, of the startups and investors. Speaking about the investments, even now, if you wish to invest in commodities or deposits, if they don't bring uh, uh, revenues or the rate of return is pretty low, uh, the shares are probably, or, equ or equity is probably one of the most profitable and probably the best investment. Uh, but uh, multiplying 10 times uh, the capital during four to five years is almost impossible. However, there is another type of investments. It could be more risky, but it's more uh, 
valuable for innovations, which is venture investments. And technological companies have a number of advantages compared to non-technological companies. Uh, based on the experience of the uh, previous and current crisis, uh, technological companies can very easily adapt and they uh, take the top positions uh, on capitalization and they grow very quickly. All the companies that uh, cross the threshold of $3 million uh, are all technological companies. and. Uh, uh, what, how the business investors uh, uh, appraise the projects uh, have changed. Uh, the previous metrics do not uh, work anymore. Previously, you cared about the previous uh, statistics and indicators, and now you are more careful, uh, careful about the future. Uh, why, for example, technological companies uh, show, demonstrate uh, PR-based uh, capitalization. However, there is a, a low level of the current uh, capital, you can look at the experience and history of uh, Caspian, where the uh, rate of return does not differ from other companies, but from the point of view of capitalization, it's uh, much ahead of uh, uh, the competitors. Uh, therefore, uh, the growth is only pro provided by this breakthrough technologies. And there are lots of startups all over the world in various sectors. And the driver for such uh, startup growth is the venture capital. You all are aware about uh, Tesla case and other cases where uh, which are mostly financed by venture capital and even the companies that go IPO uh, got investments from IP uh, from venture cap uh, capital venture companies and uh, even more aggressive uh, uh, policies uh, now venture capital market is getting even more democratic uh, issuing various uh, tools such as uh, seed and uh, pre-IPO products. Uh, there are lots of platforms that make venture capital more accessible. And this is the platform that we would like to uh, create for our investors and for our region. However, we should realize that the investments uh, by the venture uh, have certain nuances such as higher risk, uh, lack of opportunity to get public and publicly available information about the companies. Uh, uh, it's difficult to assess the technology. Uh, this is a different reality where the previous or old methods do not work, uh, which you have to be clear about to become the efficient investor uh, in venture. And also in venture, sector, the connections and insight views are probably the most important. That's why we would like to first uh, uh, attract uh, the English uh, investments uh, to uh, provide co-investment so that uh, investors could get uh, the best possible proposals and best possible offers. And uh, if necessary, we would provide the training. And for the investors, we save their time and resources uh, and uh, reduce the risks of investments in startup. And the key um, advantage of our platform is the possibility of co-invest with the prominent investors and venture funds. And um, my colleague will speak more about the investments in Central Asia and within introduction of this approach, we will provide support uh, in investments in uh, develop and development of venture market. And based on our experience, we will help uh, structuring the transactions. And after the transaction is uh, uh, concluded, uh, we will uh, help providing the post-investment management. Now I'd like to give the floor to Asaf, our partner, who will provide more detail about the venture studio. Okay, thank you, Oslan, and uh, good evening to everyone. I'll just share my screen. Okay, so... Okay, so I'm going to speak today um, about the Venture Studio. And so, in addition to the process that uh, Arslan described uh, regarding the VRE, um, we, we are looking over the, the startup journey, not only on the aspect of uh, bringing the capital and bringing the ecosystem, but also in terms of uh, how we can help him in, uh, in their journey, starting from an early stage startup 
and growing into more scale and hopefully Okay, do you see it now? Is it fine? Okay, so the, the, first, the first question is, what is actually a venture studio? So venture studio is a, a powerhouse or a production house that helps the startup to build, to scale, and to grow during their different type of challenges and uh, convert them into a successful businesses. So the next question that we should ask, why Venture Studio is so important to the startups? So we need to, to look over the, the statistics uh, of early startup where we can find that uh, more than 90% of the startup fails, which brings us the question why, uh, why they are failing and how we can improve their uh, chances of success. So when we are evaluating uh, the challenges and the difficulty for early stage startups, um, there are uh, several aspects. One of, the, one of them is, of course, uh, lack of resources. Uh, an early stage startup, it still requires a, a higher budget, while to get into this type of position, he still needs to, to prove his, um, his business model. And on the other hand, um, most of the early stage startups consist from people that uh, not necessarily have a big experience in uh, growing a startups, and that is why a team, uh, a strong team that can uh, provide a diversity of services, bringing their own expertise, might be the solution, or with the name we call it, uh, a venture studio. So who, are, who we are, um, so I'm leading a company called Titanium Technologies, which is a partner for, uh, and uh, we did a lot of work together in the last following year to, uh, together with, uh, with uh, FinTech Hub, uh, FC FinTech, uh, to, to build the Venture Rocket Eurasia. So now after this following efforts, we look ourselves as a group of three companies that are collaborating to bring the Venture Studio. Ourselves, Titanium, who is bringing a lot of, us, um, a lot of experience uh, with the startup journey, growing a lot of startup during the last several years. Uh, AIFC FinTech is the, is the platform where, uh, is, the, is of course the entity that helps us to bring a lot of benefits and a framework for the ecosystem. Avenger Rocket Eurasia are the ones that uh, are basically, you know, raising the funds and the capital to help the startup to grow. So the combination of these three are actually bringing uh, expertise and experience, a favorable business condition, and the platform as a service which helps the, the, um, the startup to raise the funds. So when we look over, and that's what we learned in the last following year, we look over the Central Asia startup ecosystem. We found it uh, very interesting um, for a few aspects. First of all, uh, this is still um, this is still pretty pretty fresh place where um, where a lot of opportunities might be, even if it's from the local market, if it's from the talents. Um, that uh, can uh, can be the, the seed or the core for the startups. Um, the all the all uh, the all activities of AIFC provide right now a very interesting uh, re regula regulatory framework and tax, which at the end of the day might be a great benefit for the startup for the local startup growing, and uh, on the other hand, on the next phase attracting uh, international startups to come to Kazakhstan and uh, to get all the benefits with their uh, goal to, to grow. Um, we see also the, the local market uh, as a great opportunity due to the fact that uh, there is a growing demand uh, and uh, the market is not, uh, is not small, so bring, to bring innovation, products and services. On the other side, um, I would call it opportunity, and this is the points of growth. 
So the fact that the market uh, is consists mainly from early stage uh, startups, which is our expertise and which is a great opportunity also for the investors to, to invest and to find themselves uh, getting a very good opportunity for a startup that is growing. Um, Titanium is part of a, a global uh, ecosystem. We have a global ecosystem and activities in a lot of other countries, and we look over it as a great uh, opportunity to bridge once the startup is growing and to extend their, um, their exposure into international startups. Um, and of course, everything we, we are doing uh, with Venture Rocket Eurasia, uh, which provide the source uh, for, the, for both the investor and the startup in terms of the capital. So the next, uh, the next slide, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, try to, uh, to drill down a little bit about what will be the actual um, services that the, 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 the Venture Studio will provide. So, and, and we, when we're talking about um, Venture Studio, at the end of the day, the idea is to bring the best value for the startup themselves. Some of the startup will be stronger in terms of technical skills. Part of them might be more strong in terms of local marketing. But at the end of the day, we, are, we build a team that can cover uh, full scalability or full stack in terms of the services. Starting, of course, from the strategic planning, which is the basis for every type of startup uh, to put their goals, to put their uh, focus. Um, we will provide them also an ongoing consulting and guidance, and this is very important because a startup is, uh, the startup journey is very, very adaptive and very flexible, so that's something that uh, we should look over the, um, the ongoing process. Uh, of course, business development and sales, as I mentioned, the bridge to international market, which is also something pretty important to combine. Um, all the benefits and the aspects come bringing the, the AFC bringing, like uh, registration, authorization, um, of course, services like uh, technical review and analysis. And the, the, another very important aspect is the investor relation and network. While startup is starting, uh, one of the main aspects is to uh, keep and manage the relation with the investors. The investors are the potential one to put additional money while the startup is growing. And this is an aspect that uh, we should cover. And of course, everything related to the PR and marketing. So, um, yeah, so uh, on the last uh, four years, Titanium Technologies was uh, growing as a part of the venture studio uh, around 20 startups. Uh, you can see here the list. I can say that part of them um, during the last four years, one of them at least became a public company. Um, rest, uh, rest of them are, was moving from early stage into more advanced stage, might be round A, round B. And, uh, and we see the, the how important is the, the venture studio use case. And we want to bring it uh, into Kazakhstan. So what, what, what are the, our plan for the next steps? So as, we, as I mentioned, we look over the VRE startups, at least part of them that we can support and we can bring them uh, additional value as our target, uh, target startup uh, to help them to grow. I think this is also the big promise we are uh, bringing in with the VCs, with the local VCs, with the angels, uh, as I, Arslan mentioned. Uh, we will focus, keep focusing on building a strong uh, ecosystem by uh, closing different type of partnerships, uh, bringing uh, more expertise into the local team uh, as well as for the international one. Uh, as I uh, mentioned, a lot of those services requires strong people and strong expertise. So we are looking to keep growing and building a diversity team that can handle all the uh, all the different aspects of the startup, and uh, and the next step is of course bridging um, global capital to local startup. Um, means like once the once the startups are growing, it should also uh, it, it they we should also be 
under the radar and um, for, for international uh, capital to come to, to Kazakhstan. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, we are looking forward for the great uh, journey we are doing together with AIFC, with VRE, and we would like we would like to see and to and to bring additional type of value to really create and bring uh, cre a great uh, innovation and startup into into the market. So thank you. Thank you, Asaf. What do you think? Um startup need more like uh, apart from investment in your opinion yeah, i so think for me for me the the capital at the beginning is just just the first phase and this basic this is basically um let's call it the the engine or the or the um, i mean at the end of the year the funding for their next steps so once they get the capital everything is just starting and that's uh, the critical aspect well, when uh, they need to use in the right way the, their budget, putting the focus where they are planning to go, getting the mentorship, the expertise and help from, uh, from someone uh, that has a good, good network, good expertise, that's something that can really, really maximize their chances to, to succeed. Thank you, Asaf. Thank you. Теперь хотел передать слово Ажар, чтобы она сказала на Ажар. Now the floor to you. Please tell us more in detail about this, more in detail about the startup, so that we have plans to help with the applications. Maybe all of them will go for applications. Those potential startups that we have cherry picked from our available pipeline. Ажар. Shoot, uh, Asaf, uh, thank you very much uh, for sharing uh, such interesting and valuable information. And uh, thank you for sharing the experience uh, that uh, you gained uh, from uh, implementing a similar studio in Israel. And I believe uh, that this uh, concept of a venture studio definitely will create and foster a startup, uh, qualitatively new startup culture in Central Asia. Now about our first uh, demo day that we conducted uh, in Central Asia, on the uh, 15th of uh, June, we selected the five startups and based on our business uh, processes concept, uh, we uh, conducted colossal uh, work uh, for uh, selection. We interviewed um, uh, participants, contestants, so we reviewed their business models. Uh, uh, right now, we have uh, registered 40 startup projects, as Aslan mentioned, uh, and we have cherry-picked five uh, that might uh, present potential interest to investors. And uh, uh, briefly about each one, uh, Bills. Uh, Bills is a new team of enthusiasts uh, from Uzbekistan. Uh, guys, I uh, developed uh, a solution. Uh, for uh, retail for small and medium uh, enterprises uh, based uh, on uh, uh, post terminals uh, and uh, uh, business analytics. Uh, so the business uh, model here is a retail management uh, platform uh, to enable you uh, to uh, manage uh, uh, cash, uh, uh, goods, uh, clients, uh, and uh, also they, uh, the same team developed a second uh, platform uh, with uh, additional functionalities uh, necessary for online sales. And uh, for the financial tools uh, where, for example, a store can uh, sell uh, on uh, sell away uh, or on credit. So uh, uh, that's a subscription-based model. Subscription costs uh, 50 to $100. Dollars a month. Uh, so for e-commerce, of course, you need to, to also to have a one of payment plus a subscription. But looking at the financial instruments that the guys uh, plan to implement in the future, then uh, the uh, revenue streams will be generated as a percentage of our transactions. At this day, the company makes about uh, uh, twenty thousand uh, dollars U.S. a month. Uh, compared uh, to last uh, quarter, the turnover grew by uh, fifteen percent uh, because of the growth in number of our clients, which also grew by twenty percent compared to Q4 of twenty twenty. But here we also have to keep in mind uh, that uh, the volume of uh, sales uh, in Q4 was much higher because of New Year because of uh, uh, winter holidays. 
now uh, uh, a little bit about the statistic information monthly uh, turnover is about eight million dollars us uh, and uh, that is about 180,000 transactions uh, on an annual basis 90 million dollars us and uh, 4 million uh, transactions on an annual basis the number of registered clients right now is uh, 300,000 people uh, so L LTV cup uh, is a uh, 16 ratio is uh, it takes about five to six uh, months uh, to recoup uh, the investments. Uh, uh, the uh, company has already uh, used the venture capital and uh, right now they are uh, um, now they're getting one million dollars US in order to expand uh, their activities to new markets such as Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan and Russia. Our next uh, startup, uh, uh, that's Intershop. Intershop, uh, that's uh, uh, first and foremost, that's a marketplace uh, that connects uh, retail with uh, uh, customers. Uh, Intershop, that's al already a recognized brand in Kazakhstan. Uh, development began in 2016 and uh, development is ongoing. Uh, and this uh, point in time, Intershop uh, is active in five uh, larger cities in Kazakhstan. Uh, and uh, they launched the operations uh, from July 2020. That means that the infrastructure is uh, in DEFCON 1, and that means that uh, they can uh, open up uh, new operations in new cities or in new shops. So talking about the brand itself, uh, InstaShop has 26 partners, so that means uh, uh, supermarkets and grocery stores. So that means uh, 20,000 uh, uh, clients uh, who all order who place orders out for food uh, the average value 41 dollars uh, uh, at least uh, twice a month uh, in kazakhstan uh, the grocery market uh, is uh, still in early stages of development uh, but we see growth compared to 2019 yes of course that growth can be explained by covid uh, most uh, purchases went online and as a result uh, we also see growth here uh, revenue streams uh, uh, bonuses uh, from uh, merchants, uh, also ads uh, and uh, delivery. And surcharges uh, for the goods uh, sold. Uh, talking about the financial aspect, uh, first and foremost, I would like uh, to bring your attention to the GNP indicator, which is on the left, uh, and uh, uh, GNP is the uh, total revenue and the uh, earnings. Uh, as you can see, earnings have grown uh, uh, since the launch of uh, the application, and we also saw a spike that uh, coincided with uh, uh, quarter two and three of 2020 when lockdown happened. And uh, in October of 2019, a uh, company started to, to see operational profits uh, and uh, turnover grew to $270,000 uh, dollars US a month, earning uh, $57,000 57, US. Uh, about unit economics, uh, uh, so, uh, profits uh, per order seven dollars us uh, cost uh, four dollars uh, margins uh, began to grow from uh, march of 2020 which is which is a, a strong signal for scaling up uh, uh, in conclusion insta shop uh, is already a good uh, model uh, it has uh, gained traction and we can see that uh, from the performance of the company uh, since its exemption. And uh, this uh, is a team that achieved results uh, with minimum resources. Uh, so this is the first investment round for the company. Uh, and, uh, and they uh, would like uh, to attract uh, from uh, anywhere from 500,000 to 1 million dollars US uh, through round A funding to uh, beef up the IT and marketing. Next, uh, Key Security. Key Security is an application that uh, gives you family security services. The idea here is that uh, uh, you can download uh, this app uh, to your kids' uh, uh, smartphone and to your smartphone. Uh, so uh, this application is uh, made for children. Uh, uh, there are interesting quizzes, there are interesting games that children can play uh, through this application. Uh, so at, at this point in time, key security is that's uh, 800,000 downloads. Uh, that's a high rating, 4.6 out of uh, 5 uh, uh, in Google Play and uh, in App Store. 
So the geography is uh, quite significant. Uh, it covers at least uh, several countries uh, from the launch of its application. The guys uh, signed uh, partnership agreements uh, with uh, large telecom providers, uh, KSL, UCL, and in Russia, Svidnoi. The plans for 2021 include expanding the geography of operations, and they plan to tap new markets such as Moldova, uh, Georgia, Armenia, Ukraine, and uh, Southeast uh, Asia. Uh, according to data from Delta Bridge Market Research, by 2025, uh, the uh, market uh, for uh, key security services will reach $7.5 uh, billion US. And the drivers for this growth uh, will be uh, the use of uh, smartphones by uh, early uh, age children. So talking about the financial indicators, uh, then earnings uh, in April of uh, 2021 was $36,000 US, which is seven times before the onset of uh, COVID. Uh, even though we can say that uh, before the onset of uh, COVID, uh, we all needed uh, con control over our children. And uh, the main factor here is uh, inclusion uh, in this application, interesting games for children. LTV Kappa is now 4.1, this ratio. The company has reached uh, the point of profitability in October of 2020. The company also uses uh, money uh, for angel investor money, business angel money in, and investments. And at this time, they are trying to attract $500,000 US in order to strengthen the IT to scale up uh, marketing in the former Soviet Union and uh, also to become a top uh, three maternity and childhood application. Uh, pr project number four, uh, Aku. Aku is a platform online education for children, students, uh, uh, and uh, uh, teachers uh, uh, to teach uh, uh, programming languages. Uh, this uh, program provides uh, courses, uh, also tasks. Uh, uh, all of that is done through an, an, through an intuitive interface. Uh, so it's an educational environment. That's an automated system for scoring uh, tasks. Uh, also, it provides uh, business intelligence uh, for teachers, uh, also practical exercises. And there is an opportunity to also to conduct uh, scholastic competitions. Uh, a uh, cool business model model is done uh, uh, through uh, uh, subscription. First of all, it's uh, a cool school B2G, 140 monthly uh, subscription fee. Uh, number two, uh, a cool plus, uh, that's uh, a B2C product uh, that uh, offers additional courses uh, for students uh, with a monthly subscription of $9 US. And number three, that's uh, a mobile application where money will be made uh, through ad ads advertising. During six months, we have registered more than 14,000 students, uh, including uh, 5,000 uh, which are active, uh, weekly active users, uh, more than 250 registered teachers, and more than 59 schools uh, on the platform. And to one uh, another 50 schools will, will be connected soon. The company plans to raise uh, around 300,000 euros dollars. Uh, with the possibility to scale up and uh, grow up. And the last team uh, is Smart Gas. Smart Gas is the application to pay for the um, gas fueling facilities, uh, the mobile service uh, server for the uh, car drivers uh, that can fill in their cars uh, without uh, leaving their car. Uh, you can pay for the fuel uh, from your smartphone. Smart Gas is now 14 clients from K uh, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Russia, and Turkey. They already partner with banks and uh, major corporations such as Caspi Bank, Halik, Beeline, and Alpha Bank. The most important competitive advantage is the fact that Smart Gas has uh, digitalized uh, paper uh, coupons and fuel cards, uh, thus eliminating theft and fuel of, of loss, uh, fuel losses for corporate clients. But the business model of Smart Gas is based on three flows, uh, getting fee of 2% from every transaction, subscription of $90 per month for each uh, the fuel gas fuel station, and partnership uh, using uh, the scheme of white labor. During the last month, the revenue of the company uh, 
turned out to be more than $20,000. And given the new market of Turkey, where the guys got into and uh, raising the new investment round, uh, the uh, company expects to get the revenue of more than 1 million US dollars starting from at the end of 2021. Uh, previously, the company have raised investments and now they are raising the $400,000 to enhance their investments. That's all about the startups. And however, I would like to comment that there are a lot of uh, talented teams and there is a great opportunity for their growth involving all the players at the venture capital market. And we vote with both hands to develop this market. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Ajar. This is a very good example of the startups that could operate on the platform. And by doing this, we would like to demonstrate. Uh, I would uh, like to pass it that to Kian. Kian is an uh, experienced venture investor from UK. And uh, as a uh, fund uh, from already developed uh, ecosystem, startup ecosystem, and actively investing in this region, can you? Tell about your experience in investing in the, in the region. What kind of startups you find? What kind of what is the quality of startups? And um, why do you decided to come here? Were any like friends that brought you here? So could you, in detail, maybe describe your experience? Thank you. So, so first of all, thank you and um, good evening to everyone listening. So for those of you who don't know um, about Sturgeon Capital, we're effectively a London-based venture firm focused exclusively on investing in, in what we call frontier markets. Um, and it's important to quickly define what frontier markets are. In our mind, they are countries where historically the state has been the most significant allocator of resources or capital in the country. And as such, you still have a very small private sector uh, that over time is growing. And the reason why technology now we think is extremely interesting within this broad concept of frontier is that all of a sudden the infrastructure to build companies has changed over the past five years. That is, if you look at the past 20 years, all technological improvement, innovation, you could argue has been unequal in its distribution. That is, in more developed countries, people have had access to PCs, to smartphones, and to high-speed internet. And it hasn't really been up, up until the past five years um, that countries such as Kazakhstan and a lot of other countries have really had access to that in a sense that you have today 60, 70% smartphone penetration and relatively high um, access to uh, fast speed internet. What that means then is all of a sudden you have the infrastructure to build very interesting business models. And the benefit is being based in London, we've seen what business models have worked throughout the world. Uh, the ones that genuinely can have positive unity economics are profitable, are scalable. We've seen why they've worked. Um, and what, what our job ultimately is to think about those business models and how they can be localized in these countries that we invest in uh, to truly be able to scale and work. And to think about it in the context of other countries that have had success, uh, to put it in the context of Kazakhstan, if you take the most extreme example of China, effectively 10 years ago, they were known as the copycat economy. Everything was made in, in, in manufacturing in China. And over the past 10 years, off the back of that technology infrastructure, They've created probably over a trillion dollars in enterprise value for technology companies. Indonesia, a bit of a smaller country, has created probably around plus 50 billion. India is on 100 billion. And so, but we see below that a lot of countries, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan included, where that technology infrastructure is in place, but you still have very low levels of, of, of enterprise value technology. Um, and, and we see it inevitable that over the next 10 years, that won't play a much larger role. That is to say, if you take uh, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, or Central Asia as a whole reason, region, uh, we see no reason why over the next 10 years, um, you can't create 50 to 100 billion in enterprise value. So then the question is, what is our job within that? Um, the way we see it is, uh, you have a lot of capital in the, in the early stages from angels to pre-seed to seed, um, but th there hasn't been capital developed in, in the more later stage rounds. And that's effectively what we want to do. We want to be partners for companies from the very beginning uh, to the point of exit. Or if the, if the founders want to stay with the companies forever to facilitate them being able to do that. So the way we see it is ultimately capital is a commodity. Whilst we are able to provide the capital from C to series B and above, what we really want to be able to do is facilitate these entrepreneurs and management teams in the growth of their business. Whether it be in helping them to hire, whether it be in helping them to um, get advice from people that are very experienced in that business model and helping them build that business. 
uh, whether it's on build, allowing them to build an infrastructure so that in a few years they can actually raise capital from more international investors. Um, what we want to be is the partner of choice um, uh, for these early stage companies. And so if you look across our portfolio, typically what happens is we underwrite the early stage risk of these companies, typically with the first outside investors, especially with first outside international investors. We provide the capital for the company to be able to grow, to provide them with resources in terms of human, human resources, um, advisory, um, to then get them to a stage where uh, their infrastructure, the business is ready to be able to access other international capital that can then further legitimize and further catalyze the growth of those companies to then get to whether being bought out to IPO or whatever it so wishes is the, the right strategy for, the, for these companies. Um, in the past year, we've been particularly aggressive about our investing. We've roughly done an investment every month. Um, we invest, our lowest investment has been $250,000. Uh, we've gone up as large as $7 million. Uh, what we're looking to do over the next few years is, de is to deploy roughly about $100 million in capital into this region um, and to really be uh, at the forefront of, of the techn technological evolution of, uh, 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 of Central Asia. Now, in terms of the types of business models that we like, uh, the way we see it is you have an offline market that is quite fragmented in many areas is inefficient. We're not looking at investing in business models that are disrupting the offline market. We're looking at business models that are looking to organize demand, organize the offline market, and by doing that, bring efficiency um, to, 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 to that particular business model across the value chain. The result being that you bring a, a, a value uh, efficiencies across the value chain uh, for society. You have the ability to create jobs uh, specifically within the youth, um, and that the totality of that over the next five to ten years will mean in a society that is able to access products and services in a very efficient manner um, is building a true private sector. You're getting international investors involved in these market and truly innovative business models. Um, and that the, the end result will be, will be broadly positive for the society and economy. Um, and the important point, and uh, it, it, it goes to the, the point of this, this, this panel and this discussion as well, is uh, we cannot do this in isolation. Um, there has to be a foundation of an ecosystem that can support our activities and hopefully support other investors also um, entering into this region. And so what the AISC is doing, what, what Venture Rocket Eurasia is doing, is, is, is vital to the development of the ecosystem of startups. That is to democratize the access of capital to the broad society, to help companies um, develop over time, and to provide the infrastructure that is rigorous and trusted enough for international investors such as ourselves to want to participate in. And to put that into context, uh, two of our portfolio companies are now registering themselves in the AAFC. One, Bills, which you mentioned earlier, is actively engaging with Venture Rocket and looking to utilize the platform to raise capital. Uh, and so we are uh, significant supporters of this uh, initiative. Um, and the end goal would be to see a multitude of investors uh, really participating through Venture Rocket, through AAFC, uh, to really build Central Asia as a, as, a, as, a, as a region for international investors to want to participate in, uh, in, in the building of technology companies within this region. Um, so I'll stop there. I'm more than happy to take any questions um, uh, you may have. Uh, yeah, I have just one uh, question. Thank you for your sure. description of what you've done and what you're doing. And uh, you're, uh, it's very great that you guys are considering uh, uh, this region. And, uh, and, it, and, and, and comes the question. So you, I think you've, uh, you've been in this region for some time and over the period of you Observe, um, looking at the companies and startups, um, uh, can you say any trend that is going on? Maybe over the time, over the span of four or five years, maybe the quality of startups has improved, uh, or more interesting sure. companies are showing up. So, so what sure. do you think about this? Yeah. So what what we've seen effectively is the the, the diversity in business models increasing. So. Version one was, was trying to take the very obvious business models that existed and trying to implement that. And then what we're seeing is that a lot of entrepreneurs are, are taking various different uh, sectors. So it could be auto, it could be health, it could be fitness, it could be anything, and implementing technological solutions to, to have the most optimal uh, solution for the broader society and economy. So the breadth of business models is increasing. Um, there's one trend which I, I, I consider a negative, but I think it's solvable in the sense that the, the stack of available capital to startups today is in a very early stage. 
that is angels can provide capital um but when you when you and, and what that means is that uh, a lot of startups uh, their expectations of valuations in the early stages is, is quite high, frankly. Um, to give you an example, I think Shopify, which today is a plus 100 billion company, their Series A round was done at 19 million. And we're seeing some companies that believe their Series A round should be at 15 to 20 million. So on our, on our job, what we see is we can understand why they, those expectations are set, but it's to educate companies on why actually if you start off in a high valuation, it could be a recipe for disaster. The worst thing for an investor is to, for, to, for a company to go for a down round. And what you're effectively doing by, by setting a high valuation early on is you're setting very high expectations for what your performance should be. That is, if you cannot justify that valuation when it comes to your next round, you inevitably will have a down round, which will just lead to a, a negative, negative consequences for your business. And so for what we see is, is rationally trying to explain how to set reasonable valuations for your companies with the ultimate goal that you can maximize valuation and you can uh, monetize the efforts that you put in in the interim. Yeah. Thank you very much. I think uh, it's almost time up and we've passed our 50% threshold. Thank you, Kian. Thank sure you well. for your contribution uh, to the ecosystem. And uh, finally, uh, I would just change the question. Uh, Thank you very much to all of you for the session. Thanks for visiting us. I would like to thank our speakers once again and our team of VRA. Uh, I'd like to wish all of you good success. So we have a lot of things to do since our ecosystem is only at the initial stage of development and uh, we lack some financing, but we would like to accelerate this process and help the development of the ecosystem. And we would be uh, would like to officially make an official statement that we are planning to fund uh, raising for the startups. Uh, thanks a lot to all of you. Goodbye. And now. We're